Welcome to PM Experts Business Edition. There is talk about Ghana's economy seeing signs of recovery according to the latest uh, IMF document on the country. But what role are development partners playing in helping this economy recover to get to where we are all looking forward to? There have been concerns about whether our development partners have been up to it in ensuring that when we're going the wrong way, they bring us back on track. But today we are engaging the new country director for the World Bank here in Ghana and other countries in the West African region. That is Robert Telasio uh, O'Brien. I hope I got the, the middle name right. And that's <laughs> the name I've been, I've been struggling with sir, since your posting. Uh, is it Tass Just help me out. Sure, it's Tele Telercio. Telercio. It's an Italian right. name, not very common, so not easy to pronounce, so don't I, worry. I struggled a lot when the announcement was made about your posting, and I had to come back to one of your officials here to even run me through <laughs> the name and all the rest. But first, let me find out from you, how are you doing? I mean, coming in, I mean, the region is not new to you because you've had some overseas responsibilities for other African countries, but... Let's look at Ghana specific and since you began your work here as the new country uh, director. How has it been for you? Nice, cool, easy, challenging, or you're still prospecting? Uh, thank, well, thank you very much, Mr. Rafe, for inviting me on the program. I really appreciate it. And thank you for also taking the care to uh, pronounce my name correctly. Um, it has been really exciting since I got here in an assumed office in January. Um, it's been a great honor to be here. I feel very blessed to be working for the World Bank Group as country director for Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Mm. And um, there's, there's much to do, and there's a really exciting program ahead. Um, I was struck by um, a quote that I saw when I was visiting the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park mm. recently. And they had some quotes on the wall, and this one really struck me when he said in 1957, we shall measure our progress by the improvement in the health of our people, by the number of children in school, and by the quality of their education, by the availability of water and electricity in our towns and villages. Mm. Uh, and the quote goes on. But this part struck me because this is exactly what we are caring about in the World Bank Group. It's exactly what we're working on. So in, in Ghana, um, we're very pleased to have a program, uh, a portfolio of over $5 billion U.S. dollars. Um, in total, that's including mm. the IDA, the uh, International Development Association, uh, but also the IFC, the International Financial Corporation, and, al and also MIGA, mm. the Multilateral Investment uh, Guarantee Agency. So all of us together, over five billion in Ghana. 4.4 billion of that mm. is under my uh, management with my team here uh, from IDA. Mm. And, uh, and this is um, a, a program that you know, we're seeing having uh, very significant impacts. Mm. On, on Ghana in support of the, the government's priorities and, and, and programs. Mm. If I could just mention two examples. Mm. Uh, one is in education. So we have a flagship uh, project in education, which currently is supporting better learning outcomes in uh, over 10,000 mm. uh, public schools in Ghana. Mm. And uh, we're already seeing good results in terms of student test scores, uh, particularly mm. in terms of reading comprehension. Um, we're also providing teacher training uh, through that program and materials for, for the students. Mm. So that's one we're very excited about. Mm. Another one I'd like to mention is our water program. Mm. Uh, and that's uh, a project known as GAMA, which is working to support the government's initiatives to improve citizens' access to safe drinking water mm. and also toilets in their households. So Ghana has made some significant progress in both of these indicators over the past decades, but there's some more ways to go. Mm. Uh, particularly in the provision of um, household toilets. So we're proud to be supporting well, Mr. Ben, I'll, I'll, I'll be coming more into deeper into some of these projects and some of these stuff that you're doing. But uh, again, sure. I, I'll get back again to my first question. Sure. That I know that you, you worked in several African countries, but w so far in my early days yet, what has been the, the Ghana experience for you engaging the people, mm. engaging the government, and any experience was expected? or it is still a learning process for you, or the observation has been indeed great and exciting? Well, um, you know, great and exciting, and I would say uh, so far it's ex exceeded expectations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the things that really called my attention was earlier in January, 
I had an accident and broke my ankle. Um, and the number of strangers who would come up to me and ask me how I was doing, how I was feeling, uh, what happened, um, it was really touching. Yeah. And so I felt, um, I felt a very warm welcome uh, from the people of Ghana. I also wanted to say here in, in the World Bank office in Ghana, we have over 80 staff and it's an incredibly high powered, professional, um, well-trained office and, and staff who are very uh, motivated uh, to, to, um, to, to produce the development outcomes that we all want so much in Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, you may know uh, Mr. Riafe as you're an observer of the Bretton Woods institutions that we recently changed our mission. Yeah. So uh, President Ajay Banga took us from a mission where we were only focusing on reducing poverty and promoting shared prosperity to one where we're also worrying about the planet. Mm -hmm. So now our mission is to re uh, reduce poverty, reduce extreme poverty, promote shared prosperity on a livable planet. So this is an important dimension as well. But I'm very, again, very excited to be here. The first six months have gone by extremely quickly, um, but it's, uh, um, it's been a wonderful, warm welcome from, from the people of Ghana. And, he, and, and, and I, am I, will it be too early to ask you about what are you looking forward to in your service here in Ghana? Mm. Um, well, th that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great question. I would really like us to be able to um, achieve greater impact at scale. Mm -hmm. So we currently have, as I said, a $4.4 billion portfolio. We're working on quite a few sectors in Ghana. I'd love for us to be able to say, for example, we're not only covering one third of public schools in Ghana, but we're covering many more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not only uh, helping to connect um, uh, some percentage of the population to uh, reliable uh, drinking water, uh, but we're also expanding that out to include many more, including in some of the poor, poorest areas mm -hmm. of the country up in the north. So I think my, our goal will be to help shift our program uh, to having greater impact at scale, and, and for that we'll need to be more selective going forward. So I think those are some of the things that we're, that we're thinking about. Mr. Bramian, I've never seen the time when I've read so much reports coming from the World Bank Group and even the bank itself on Ghana's economy. And even mm. on the, over the past two or three months, there have been lots of reports on country Ghana about the economy and all the rest. Then I come back to you, the question about, for you, from the group and from your perspective, there have been several debates about the, the currency of Ghana's economy, whether it's recovering or it's not recovering, it's showing signs of recovery. For you, what is your verdict on the current state of Ghana's economy? Is it showing signs of recovery? Is it recovering? Or, listen, there are still challenges out there that we need to double up the process to help it stabilize soon. Mm -hmm. I, I think what, what we have definitely seen is Ghana has made steady progress toward uh, macroeconomic stabilization and is on the road to recovery. Um, at the same time, there's more to do. So let me just take a few, a few specific points there. Um, in terms of the, the very good progress that's been made thus far, inflation has been reduced. So it's, it's on a declining path mm. uh, and uh, it, needs to, it needs to keep declining. It's, it's still too high, but good progress is being made. Um, uh, thanks in part to the, the policy position of the government. Mm. Um, a second thing that we're very positive on has been all of the progress on the debt restructuring. Mm. This is obviously a critical um, reform area for the country. So um, Ghana implemented the domestic debt restructuring uh, in 2023. Uh, it reached an agreement um, uh, under the G20 common framework uh, with its official creditors, a memorandum of understanding on um, uh, restructuring the official bilateral debt, mm -hmm. also very important. And it's now in progress. Um, as of June of this year, uh, the government announced an agreement in principle with the commercial bondholders, which is the third piece, I think, of the, uh, of the debt restructuring uh, program. And so, again, very good progress, mm -hmm. uh, but more to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then lastly, uh, a very critical point is on fiscal consolidation. Mm -hmm. So we saw very important uh, measures taken by the government to reduce expenditures last year, which resulted in a 7.9 percentage point decrease in spending. Uh, so this is a very significant um, effort the government's undertaking to put the fiscal back on track. Mm -hmm. Now, there was also a small increase in uh, revenue to GDP, 0.3% uh, last year, uh, which is important, but again, more needs to be done there. So we're seeing good signs of progress in terms of the 
uh, recovery, uh, but we need to continue uh, on the debt restructuring, finalize that according to the parameters of the debt sustainability analysis that the IMF and the World Bank have, uh, continue the fiscal consolidation, uh, continue to bring down inflation. Those would be three of the the numbers that I, I pay a lot of attention to in making that kind of an assessment. Mr. Brown, you made very critical uh, submission in this point that you made, the bit about the progress that they are making on the debt exchange program. Yes. But again, are, are you satisfied? There are some of the school of thought that, looking at where Ghana has come from, they've made some significant progress. But there are some who are also even pushing. So when you go through the, the IMF staff report, which I know the bank might be privy, they were pushing that a deal should be closed soon, even before December as well. For you at the bank as well, are you satisfied with the, with the progress on this debt exchange program? So I'm not saying that there is an agreement in principle. Mm -hmm. Can we fast track for that deal to be closed, for it to be signed, some would say? I think you know, everyone would like it to be done as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. no question. Uh, the reality is, however, if we look across uh, the world and we look over time, debt restructuring takes time in, in, in most cases. So if we look at recent cases in Africa uh, under, the, under the common framework, um, I think the Ghanaian experience is actually uh, quite positive in mm -hmm. that comparative perspective. Uh, from our side, we provide as much analysis as we can to support the government in its debt restructuring. Uh, but the, the negotiations on the commercial debt restructuring are handled directly by Ghana mm -hmm. with its creditors. Uh, again, we've seen good progress and, um, and we hope that continues. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're quite optimistic that uh, an agreement should be signed very soon from the bank's perspective. I, again, I, I very much hope so. Mm. You, you, you've talked about this recovery and the signs of recovery. The question that comes up again is about, is it sustainable? Are you optimistic about the outlook going forward? Because some are saying that we are seeing these signs of recovery because of an IMF program. Well, I think, you know, I, uh, the IMF program and the World Bank program, I think, are, are key supports mm -hmm. to the recovery process. Um, the, the IMF uh, program, as you know, uh, just underwent its second review. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, ECF uh, in June. Mm -hmm. So that was very positive. At f on our side, uh, we had our first um, uh, DPO yeah. operation, yeah. development policy operation, approved by our board in January. So again, that's a, a very a good signal from our board uh, on the progress the government has made. Uh, our second DPO operation is still under discussion, and uh, we hope that one will also uh, continue to make progress. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to finalize that soon. But I think, so you're, you're pointing to the important point about uh, the recovery and, and the short term. Mm -hmm. There's a bigger challenge on the longer term. Mm -hmm. And how do you get Ghana to a higher level of growth? How do you get more inclusive growth that lifts people out of poverty? Mm -hmm. So those are challenges which you know, we're happy to discuss mm -hmm. uh, uh, today. Um, but, um, uh, the, and, and we're also in an election year. Yeah. And we look historically at, um, at experiences in Ghana and, and many countries. And, and that is what I was coming, uh, Mr. Bryan, yeah. about whether for you, you worry that our biggest test to this recovery that we are seeing is the election related spend despite the fact that government has given us a lot of assurances the concern would be whether that would be that fiscal discipline mm -hmm. in the election season yeah i think that's that's a that's a great question um uh, the government has said it's going to maintain uh, the fiscal discipline needed and i think again we're in the context of an ongoing debt restructuring so the fiscal uh, discipline is extremely important there's also the IMF and the World Bank programs in place that also support and, and, and undergird uh, the fiscal discipline needed. Um, so I think the policy intent is there. The targets are there. Uh, and, and it'll be important this year to not have any policy slippages so that the government can keep on track mm -hmm. with its commitments. The other side of that is the more day-to-day -day implementation of the budget. And this is the public financial management questions. And there, uh, we have to look at, are the systems robust? Mm. Do the systems control spending adequately? Um, uh, is the uh, uh, financial information system covering all of government spending? Uh, is the e-procurement system covering all of procurement? And, and no, not yet. Mm. Good progress is being made, but more has to be done there as well to ensure that there aren't slippages in implementation. Mm. But are you, are you satisfied with the 
with their assurances? Have you seen the, the structures in place from the bank's perspective that gives you some comfort that, well, my fears are maybe have been dealt with or less than it's a more of a wait and see. That's right. Well, I think um, the, uh, uh, you know, we, we have seen the progress thus far. Mm -hmm. We've seen, as I mentioned, significant fiscal consolidation thus far. So that's a, v uh, that's a very good track record mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the last, in the last really two years. Um, and the, as I mentioned, the, the programs are in place to support mm -hmm. uh, ongoing fiscal consolidation. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so I think the, the risks of, I think the, um, the risks of policy slippages mm -hmm. um, are being carefully managed by the government because if there are significant policy slippages, that will go back and affect the macro and then that would be very detrimental. Mm. Mr. Uh, Robert O'Brien is the country director for the World Bank and engaging him on Ghana's economic recovery. What role is the bank playing and whether the criticism is about the bank and even our development partners Sometimes arguing that they are to be blamed for our current woes, whether those concerns are justified or not. This is PM Express Business Edition. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition. Let's look at the Ghana's economic recovery and the role of the World Bank. What are they doing to help in stabilizing Ghana's economy? Uh, Bob uh, O'Brien is the country director for the World Bank. He wants me to call him Bob and not the Robert Talisio O'Brien. Thank you so much. Sir. But I want to come back again to the bit about inflation because even though it was just released yesterday, there are some who are still worried about the level of inflation. And I dovetail that to the concerns about the bank and the, the science of recovery. So um, it's legitimately a, a very um, important worry for most people and most families. And uh, declining inflation, of course, means that prices are still rising, just rising at a slower rate. So it's very much moving in the right direction. As I said, from 50% uh, was down to about 25, and now it's down even further. As you mentioned, 20.9% yes. based on the latest data yeah. we got yeah. yesterday yeah. Yeah. From, uh, from the government. Yeah. So very good progress, but much more to do. Mm. And much more to do. So for, for some people, what, what spots should we be touching? to stimulate and fast track the recovery for you? Uh, well, I think the uh, a critical area is fiscal consolidation, as I mentioned, which is uh, making good progress, but uh, there's more to do there, uh, particularly on uh, revenue to GDP. Yeah. So increasing the level of revenue to GDP is a very important um, consideration for Ghana going forward. The, our, our current uh, projection for 2024 is that it's about 12.8%. Mm. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was 12.5% in terms of revenue uh, as a share of GDP. If you look at the average in sub-Saharan Africa, it's actually significantly higher at 16%. Mm. So there's a significant um, increase that Ghana needs to make mm. to reach um, a level of revenue to GDP that will enable it to uh, finance its development agenda. Let, let's come to the fund program. I know that the bank is playing some critical role in the You've already disbursed some funds as well. Help me appreciate the bank's role in this uh, fund program away from your other development project that you've already been f supporting Ghana. What role is the bank playing in this whole IMF program in terms of disbursement of funds, technical support? And I know you've really done, recently done some disbursement that you had to wait for parliament to approve. But the question is, what role is the bank playing when it comes to this uh, fund program for Ghana? Well, in, in a nutshell, it's a very close collaboration mm -hmm. between the, the World Bank Group and the IMF. Um, as you know, uh, George, we are uh, often referred to as the Bretton Woods mm -hmm. sister institutions, yeah. and we have a very close collaboration uh, in many countries. It's particularly close in Ghana uh, because of the need to focus on the macroeconomic stabilization and, and the development agenda here. So um, as you said, the, uh, the ECF program, the Extended Credit Facility Program on the fund side uh, was, was recently uh, saw a very positive review in June by their board. Our DPO, Development Policy Operation, um, uh, uh, touches on many of uh, uh, similar areas in terms of the reform program. So energy sector reforms, um, public finance reforms, um, social protection reforms. Mm -hmm. So those are areas where 
we have dialogue mm -hmm. with our colleagues mm -hmm. in the fund, and um, we, we share uh, uh, views, mm -hmm. and we formulate our programs so that they are complementary to each other. So in our, in our sense, um, we're focusing on, uh, let me take the example of social protection, yeah. for example. So obviously very important in Ghana, given that poverty levels have increased as a result of, the, um, of COVID, uh, the external environment, um, the macroeconomic um, challenges that the country faced, um, and also the need to undertake uh, the reforms and ensure that the reforms don't fall on, on the backs of the poor. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a significant focus on social protection programs. Um, through our uh, projects, mm -hmm. uh, as well as our DPO, which is the policy reform operation, uh, we support higher levels of spending on social protection. So the LEAP program, one of Ghana's flagship social protection programs, uh, is one that we support. Uh, we also provide technical assistance to that program, for example, to ensure that the, target, the targeting is, is robust mm -hmm. so that the, the uh, money is going to the intended beneficiaries, that is the poor who are, who are deserving of the program. Uh, on the IMF side, you'll see in their uh, documents, they also have um, a support for social protection in their program. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak for them, so let me be very clear yeah. about that, but we do have, um, we do have complementary approaches. Mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, part of the disbursement was tied to progress that had been made to the fund program. I know about the financial stability, uh, the separate funding that was supposed to have supported the, the financial sector. It went to parliament, it delayed a little bit. There have been some approvals and all there is. In t not, not being specific per se, but I know the board approves, then it has to come to Ghana for approval. Mm -hmm. When we secure the parliamentary approval, what next, when are we likely to get the, the disbursement being done, whether it's going to be tied to project or meeting certain conditions? When are we going to get, for instance, the Financial Stability Fund? I know that, uh, that you're supposed to support the financial sector. When are we going to have the disbursement? There was one recently about the energy sector support as mm -hmm. well. Yes. When are these disbursements going to come in uh, to Ghana? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to talk about that. Um, let me just start by saying, so we have, our, we have our portfolio and then we have our pipeline. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our portfolio, as I mentioned, the 4.4 billion, mm -hmm. uh, of that we, are disper we dispersed over the past six months just over $1 billion. Mm -hmm. Over the past, sorry, 12 months in Ghana, $1 billion. Um, of, the, of those expenditures on goods and services, construction, and so on, 70% of that funding was um, dispersed uh, to uh, Ghanaian companies. Mm -hmm. So 70 percent of the of, of those funds dispersed to Ghanaian companies. So I think a significant economic impact as well. And going forward in the next 12 months, we expect to disperse another one billion dollars. Uh, so so that's where we are now. Looking forward to your your question, uh, our board of directors has approved, as you said, recently um, in June and July and even into early August, over 830 new dollars, 830 million dollars. Uh, including the, uh, a project on financial stability, mm -hmm. a project on energy sector reform. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those are 250 million each. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, and, uh, and then the DPO was approved in January, that's mm -hmm. 300 million. Uh, and then there's uh, additional funding for the Gamma water project of 30 million. So that is the 830 that I'm talking about. Um, uh, the 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 uh, energy project, the financial uh, sector project, and the water project are s are still now with Parliament. Mm. I understand Parliament will reconvene soon, and we're very hopeful that they will approve those loans so we can get to having the impact mm. uh, uh, in those sectors that mm. uh, that we can have through our operations. Mr. Brian, just for help me to appreciate and some understanding here, please. So, when sure. Parliament approves these facilities. We're then going to get everything, or knowing how the bank works, yeah. what could be the process in realizing these funds for the financial sector, the energy sector, and then the, the other disbursement? I know you've done another one for the, the, the climate and then the water flood issues as well in Ghana. So help me out that if, first, if today Parliament have approved all these conditions, when can Ghana realize these uh, funding in terms of the disbursement and the inflows? Yes, that's a, that's a very good question. And I, again, happy to try to explain to, the, to your viewers and listeners how, how it works. We really have uh, several different modalities. So one is 
is the development policy support. And that's the modality where uh, we agree with the government on a number of policy and institutional reforms. And once the government accomplishes those, we disperse. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that is, that's a rapid, mm -hmm. rapidly dispersing. The second one, uh, broadly speaking, is a project where it's traditional implementation uh, through procurement. So contracts are signed, contracts are procured competitively, they're signed, and then the money flows in accordance with the particular contract. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third uh, modality is what we call a program for results, where there's specific results mm -hmm. agreed in a sector like education or health, and when those results are obtained, uh, there's an agreement on the amount to disperse to support, support the government's program. Mm -hmm. So then there are trust funds, there are other, other details which I won't go into now, but those are the broad modalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it depends actually on the specific operation as to the timing and the profile of the disbursement. So for, for the layman, it takes time for the drawdowns to be done. It's not just a, a, a one-off thing, some would say. So if today, for instance, uh, Parliament approves all these things, it, the, it could, the disbursement could be done in tranches and not just a one-off thing coming in, right? That's right. And, and for those operations that I mentioned mm. that are currently before Parliament, uh, the disbursements would be done according to the procurement process. Mm -hmm. So it would, it would be over time, mm -hmm. yes. So we've done about uh, 1 billion 600. What is the projection by the end of the year that if all these conditions are met, I, I get confused sometimes with the, yeah. the DPOs and then the other. Yeah. How much are we hoping to allow from the bank and then even going into next year as well? Yeah. Well, uh, if looking forward over the next 12 months, we expect to disperse another $1 billion mm. to actually disperse and spend. Mm. Um, you know, Ghana has a great track record of implementation of our operations. Mm. It's one of our highest mm. in West Africa, actually. Uh, so annual disbursement rates are, are, are high, much higher than in many other countries. And there's no reason why Ghana wouldn't continue to do that. So about a, about a billion going forward in disbursements um, we also hope for new approvals of new lending. Mm -hmm. So we hope DPO2 will be, um, uh, actions will be completed, and then we can take that back, to take that to our board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there will be other um, new operations that we'll be putting forward to our board, hopefully by the end of uh, June of next year. Mm -hmm. Are you, what measures are you putting in place, Mr. Bryan, to ensure that some will say um, aid effectiveness, uh, these monies being used efficiently for why they are being disbursed. That's mm -hmm. been a lot of concern for a lot of civil society groups as well and anti-corruption agencies who are worried about their structures in place to ensure that if the bank is giving George about a billion dollars over mm -hmm. a period, not the structures you have at the mm -hmm. bank, but yeah. what measures again have you put in place to ensure that they are hitting the right spot and they are getting the required results you're looking forward to? Yeah, well, that's very uh, that's a very high priority for us. Um, you know, we're entrusted with taxpayer money, and it's our responsibility to ensure that we're getting as much impact as efficiently as effectively with high fiduciary standards as possible. Um, uh, in addition, we're trying to uh, improve our development effectiveness. As I mentioned, our new president uh, is has a focus on uh, more agile um, engagements in our country, so that we're more responsive to our our clients' needs. But we have very strong um, systems in place to monitor uh, spending through our operations. Um, the, the, the Ghanaian government also has um, country systems that are, that are quite robust, mm -hmm. comparatively speaking, if you look across the region and the continent. And so um, we, we rely on those. We also rely on our teams to work with the counterparts to ensure uh, that the, spun the spending is going to the intended needs and the intended beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. um, there are, as in any country, challenges will emerge, problems will emerge. There, um, there are issues, you know, uh, anywhere in mis with procurement or with um, uh, other aspects of the um, uh, spending process. We 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 find those out. We have uh, very good teams that that look at those um, and investigate if needed. And then we, it, w if we ever find one of those instances, we raise it to the attention of government and it gets fixed. Um, in terms of development impact, um, we're also uh, looking at how we can best ensure we're uh, addressing poverty and the other development challenges that mm -hmm. Ghana faces. So as I mentioned, I think 
we're moving in the direction of greater selectivity for greater impact at scale. I think that's also going to help us focus our efforts on fewer areas, but get more impact out of those areas. What happens to a country? What happens to Ghana if we misapply funds or we don't do what we have to do? I mean, some are saying that sanctions are also very, very important. Are there sanctions in place to ensure that if it's flagged that certain funds were misapplied and misappropriated mm -hmm. and all the rest, what happens to the country Ghana or the company Ghana? Well, we, it, you know, if we find um, that uh, there is a misuse of funds, uh, we will ask for uh, the funds to be reimbursed to us. Who pays for that money? <laughs> 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 Who pays for that? Well, that, you know, that's an issue for, um, for the government to, to work through. Mm. But we have our systems. The government has its own systems. And, um, but we, you know, we're, we take this extremely seriously. Mm. So fiduciary uh, management and control is a top mm. priority for us. We, we don't um, sanction governments, we do sanction private firms. Oh, so if we find a firm uh, that's engaging in corruption, we will sanction them. And mm. you can see on our website, yeah. the list of firms each year that's sanctioned mm. by, um, by the World Bank um, out of our Washington mm. office. I ask this question because and I don't know the update, if it's the work in progress, that is okay. But I know that in the past, there were concerns about this has been made by the, the group and the group as well, not just the bank alone, about how covert funds were used and there were an audit and all the rest. Has the group uh, gotten any update in terms of the audits that was done? And are you satisfied or it is still something that you're looking through with respect to how these disbursements that were done over the years and how were they were used in terms of the audit that was done? Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of corruption, you know, it happens in every country, even <laughs> even my own country. Uh, we, there are instances of corruption. I think the question is, how do you deal with it? Mm. Do you address it? Uh, do you um, do you then uh, pursue justice uh, on the particular uh, engagement, and then do you strengthen the systems? Mm -hmm. And that's really what um, I, I think we're focusing on: is how do you strengthen I those mean, systems? As, as development partners, I've seen a program from your part, and even the IMF in trying to strengthen the system when it comes to fighting corruption. Are you convinced, satisfied, or you think that there's still a lot more to be done when it comes to government fight against corruption? Uh, you know, I think it's, it's an ongoing um, challenge, mm -hmm. uh, as I said, everywhere, um, uh, including in Ghana. We are um, undertaking some new analysis this year. We're just going to be starting that now on what are the key issues around corruption in Ghana mm -hmm. and then what would be the priority reforms coming out of that. So mm -hmm. I think um, that's something that's uh, in process for us and I'd be happy to talk with you about that mm -hmm. you know some some months down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the progress and just to backtrack a little bit you talked about the progress that has been made on the debt machine program or the debt um, renegotiation or restructuring with external bilateral creditors and even the other partners. But when I looked in your latest debt sustainability analysis, mm -hmm. you still classified Ghana mm -hmm. as a highly debt distressed country. Mm -hmm. Aren't you convinced about some of the engagements you've had with Ghana itself for you to do your own extrapolations and all the rest? But oh, it has to happen before it would impact on the report. Yeah, so that's a, that's a very good technical <laughs> question, <laughs> George. Um, I think that uh, if you, so you look at our latest debt sustainability analysis, yeah. which as I said is a joint World Bank IMF uh, report, and uh, in that analysis, um, Ghana is still um, characterized mm. as um, under debt distress with yeah. unsustainable debt. Yeah. That's because um, although the domestic debt restructuring has been incorporated into the analysis and the um, official bilateral restructuring um, Memorandum of Understanding has been incorporated into the analysis. Mm -hmm. The commercial uh, debt restructuring has not yet been incorporated into that analysis. So, uh, because that's still ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. We have the good news in June, but the process has to be uh, uh, completed. So once that is, once the commercial debt restructuring is finalized, mm -hmm. and assuming it's finalized according to the parameters of the debt sustainability analysis, mm -hmm. and assuming Ghana continues with its um, policy commitments and targets on, on macroeconomic uh, policy, on fiscal policy, and so on, then 
we would we would see a better uh, a, a debt situation. So it's still a work in progress. And so obviously our, our analysis can only take into account what's already actually been done. So your next report, if all these concerns are addressed, we see Ghana being moved to an improved position. I mean, not say it now, but because there are, there are several classifications. We will yes. see Ghana being moved to an improved position then, if all these requirements, especially when it comes to the commercial bilateral creditors as well. Yes, and so if you look at the, the DSA report, um, it will show, given, given the different assumptions, yeah. what the results will be. Mm -hmm. But if um, all of the measures identified in the DSA, the IMF program, the World Bank program, are implemented, then we would expect Ghana will meet the targets mm -hmm. uh, there in terms of um, uh, debt to GDP is one stock indicator, and then the flow indicator, key flow indicator is on external debt service to revenue. Mm -hmm. So then we would expect that those targets would be met over the coming years, mm -hmm. yes. For you, Mr. Brian, what do you think is the biggest threat to Ghana's economy? And there are some who, who are worried, and so they look at the numbers, uh, signs of recovery, but they're still not that comfortable. What is mm -hmm. the, or what are, if I could use that expression, the major threats to Ghana's economic stability or recovery from the perspective of the bank? So I think there are um, a couple of ways to look at that. Mm -hmm. So one is um, short term versus long term. And that's sort of um, you know macroeconomic stabilization and then the longer term development challenges. And the other is domestic and external. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I would think about that question. So let me just take a minute to mm -hmm. unpack mm -hmm. that. Um, on, the, um, on the short term, uh, obviously, as, as we were discussing, policy slippages are, are a risk. So, so keeping to the policy commitments is extremely important. Um, uh, in terms of the external environment, we also have to take that into account. So unfortunately, there are, uh, there are wars uh, uh, in Ukraine and in the Middle East. Um, those have impacts on the global economy. There's the question of how uh, the advanced countries deal with inflation. Are they taming it? We had some good news from the U.S. this week. Uh, but will that uh, continue in the advanced economies, the downward trajectory of inflation? That will also help uh, Ghana. Um, uh, weak growth globally uh, will also be a risk um, uh, to Ghana. So uh, and another one is um, uh, trade restrictions. Are yeah. countries um, be putting more trade restrictions and, and reducing the level of, of free trade? So that, that those are the kinds of um, risks I would see to the, c to the country. But I think it's also important to keep the longer term perspective in mind. We are um, a development institution. We worry about long term growth and poverty reduction. And I think there the challenge that I see in Ghana, very simply put, is increasing growth rates. Increasing growth rates to what, beyond what they are now, we're projecting I think about 3.1% growth for 2024, which is still quite subdued. Ghana should be doing much better in terms of that and making uh, growth more inclusive. Mm. So that growth is lifting more and more Ghanaians out of mm. poverty. And that's where you come down to the long-term structural reform agenda. Mm. I mentioned some of those aspects, domestic resource mobilization, um, the energy sector reforms, mm. um, agriculture, mm. uh, support to uh, the private sector to promote um, uh, uh, foreign direct investment and, and make it easier for the private sector to operate in Ghana the rule of law and good governance, as you were mentioning. These are the kind of um, big long-term structural challenges that Ghana still needs to grapple with, mm -hmm. even once, the, once they're on the f firmly on the path to recovery. You talked about the energy sector, and I know that's been the bank's baby and the reforms that you've been pushing for it to be undertaken over the years. Satisfied with the progress made so far, or those concerns that the bank or the group has held about the sector still persist? I think there has been some progress, but, but, there's, but there's more to go. You know, the energy sector um, ha it really has long-standing challenges, mm -hmm. challenges that have been going back quite a, f quite a few years. Um, and uh, uh, so it's, it, it's a very complex mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. uh, it will take uh, some time to uh, uh, put it on firmly where it needs to be. But we have seen some progress. So we've seen, for example, um, I think there are two, two main challenges mm -hmm. that the government has been trying to address. One is the arrears problem mm -hmm. in the sector. The sector is a major drain on, on the fiscal mm -hmm. side. Uh, I, 2023, uh, the deficit that 
um, from the energy sector was 1.9 percentage points of GDP. Mm -hmm. That's way too high. So that is, is one challenge. The other challenge is um, a transparency and accountability in managing the operations of the sector. Uh, so the government has made some good progress on, uh, for example, uh, inc adjusting tariffs. Mm -hmm. So now there's a, a, a policy in place based on guidelines and regulations mm -hmm. to uh, undertake quarterly adjustments Which is of, a good one for you of, bank, of tariffs. Yeah. Yes, yes, that is that is important. Um, uh, in addition, the government has been renegotiating the contracts with the IPPs. Mm. That's that's an uh, important measure as well. Um, uh, and then looking, the government's also been looking at how to improve and, and minimize uh, uh, distribution losses, for example, mm. that come from the sector. But there's more to be done. So mm. we have, as you said, we're supporting. Um, uh, several measures I think that are important. One of the most important ones is ensuring that going forward um, generation of energy in Ghana is competitively procured. So mm -hmm. competitive procurement to get the lowest prices uh, possible, uh, you know, in terms of kilowatt hour. Uh, so there's a legislative instrument uh, before Parliament. We hope that, that pr we'll, we'll mm -hmm. see good progress mm -hmm. in that area. We also have a an operation, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. uh, the Energy Program for Results, or Energy Project, mm -hmm. where uh, we're going to be supporting things like uh, the procurement of prepaid meters mm -hmm. to, to continue the rollout of prepaid meters, improve the uh, distribution uh, systems in Ghana, mm -hmm. but also undertake audits mm -hmm. of the cash waterfall mechanism mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, there's good transparency around the financial flows within the sector. So it's quite an expansive mm. agenda. There have been, been several arguments in this sector, the argument about the, the oversupply and the argument about the, the contractual negotiations with these IPPs and all that. Do you think that that has been a major challenge that has gotten us here? And are we unwinding that challenge because of how these negotiations were done and even the fact that there were even arguments about oversupply, even though we got to a place where we haven't power being rationed, if I can use that expression, was that that biggest problem? And do you think that enough is being done to ensure that we don't get there again? Well, it is a very complex sector. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think there, there, there are many dimensions of the sector that, that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. I do think we have seen a good prog progress on renegotiating uh, the contracts with the IPPs, uh, but more needs to be done there. Um, the cost of, of generation in Ghana is still too high, mm. and that will help alleviate the, the burden on the government, but also reduce the price to consumers. Mm. Um, so that's, that's an area that, uh, uh, that, that's important to continue mm. working on. Um, uh, and you know, there are also opportunities for Ghana in terms of if, if there is su su sufficient supply available and domestic demand is met, Ghana could could export, and, and we're also working uh, with Ghana, with Côte d'Ivoire, on a regional uh, electricity project to try to help promote the export of energy when, when available to help Ghana earn um, you know, foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So that's an opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many aspects of it, but many opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. This is PM Express Business Edition as I engage the country director for the World Bank. Prepare to be uh, called uh, Bob. Uh, Brian, in looking at the economy and the role that they are playing with respect to Ghana's economic recovery. We'll be back after this break and we'll look at the support for Ghana in terms of loans. There are some who are saying that does the World Bank support disbursement come with any conditions or they are free? Ghana can do whatever they like with it. This is PM Express Business Edition. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition as we talk about the economy, the recovery, and the World Bank and their role, and whether they are helping us or they are not helping us. But Robert O'Brien, Mr. My, I, I, I'm, I'm still not satisfied with, the, with a bit about the COVID issue because there are some who are still worried about whether the right thing was done or not. So you commissioned an audit. What did the report actually say? on what was done? So uh, the, uh, we commissioned an audit mm. and um, uh, the results were satisfactory. Mm. So um, uh, during of, the, of the COVID operations during that time period, there were no findings mm. of, um, uh, of any material concern. Mm. So we're satisfied with the audit and, and the operations and the results that they produced during COVID. Mm. 
And this was a, you know, remember it was a difficult time. We were mm -hmm. all stuck in our houses. So the normal kind of uh, field work and visits and so on that we would do, uh, we were not able to do. But despite that, we still have um, we still have good findings no, from the no audit report. For the bank. Uh, That's right. All the reports are there. We're not well pleased because the bank did its own analysis of the situation. That's right. Mm. Would that influence future disbursement to Ghana in crisis as well? And what are the learnings going forward? Some would say with respect to the specialized disbursement to Ghana in crisis times. I think it, it, it's a good track record in that sense. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, um, uh, there are aspects of the Ghanaian government systems that we use. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other as aspects that we don't use, where we still have our own uh, pre-approvals and so on. Um, but I think um, uh, you know, uh, institutional capacity building mm -hmm. is incredibly important for the government as well as for us. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, many of our operations support capacity building on, on, on the government side, and we will continue to do that. Mm. So I think, but those are encouraging lessons. And, um, uh, you know, we look forward to, to even stronger systems mm. in the future. Mm. Help me out again, some clarity I want on this $1 billion support and uh, the, the, the timelines and then the component of disbursement or how it will be done. Just some clarity on that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of numbers and yeah. Uh, yeah. and and a footnote. So to try to be um, crystal clear, uh, over the past 12 months, mm -hmm. we dispersed one billion dollars to Ghana. Actually, a little bit over one billion mm -hmm. to Ghana. Uh, some of that was in the form of, for example, budget support. Mm -hmm. So the 300 million is a is a rapidly dispersing amount to the government. Um, a significant share of that one billion is through procurement and contracts and so on. So of the funds that were spent on goods, services, construction, et cetera, those kinds of expenditures, 70% of those went to Ghanaian firms, were, were um, expended by Ghanaian firms. Mm. So a significant boost to the domestic economy. Are people right when they take on the bank for conditions of these disbursements? Some are saying that a chunk of that is going into consultancy and all the rest. And there have been recent comments even in Parliament about the recent energy support as well. Help us appreciate, are we getting it wrong when we conclude that some of the conditions attached to these disbursements are just not fair because a chunk of that is going to consultants that are approved by the bank or even going back to consultants in your country of origin. Are people right with these criticisms? So help us appreciate the conditions surrounding some of these disbursements to Ghana. Yeah, there was um, definitely some misunderstandings recently that were reported in the press about one of our operations in terms of, in terms of the, um, the energy operation, yeah. in terms of the amounts that were um, uh, going to be spent on consultants. That was simply not true. Yeah. That was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Um, in all of our operations, we tried to uh, procure nationally where yeah. possible. Where the services exist, the goods exist, the construction uh, uh, capacity exists, we procure nationally. Where we need international uh, expertise, we have to bring that in. Mm. Because ultimately, the, uh, the mix of domestic and in international um, uh, contracts mm. will determine how well the projects do. So where there's an expertise that's only available, you know, in a foreign country, that will need to be brought in to achieve, again, the development impacts mm. uh, that we want to see in Ghana. Mm. So that has well influenced the, the support of, but again, what is the bank also doing to build the capacity of local service providers when it comes to some of these facilities in terms of the local, uh, local content argument that has always been made? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we also have support to um, small and medium enterprises. So through some of our operations, uh, we provide um, access to finance, mm -hmm. access to credit for small and medium enterprises in and, and order you know, to support their growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're oftentimes very important employers mm -hmm. in developing countries. So um, they're, they're critical from a growth and an employment perspective. We support them. We also provide technical assistance mm -hmm. uh, under some of our operations to selected small and medium enterprises. Um, and, and this could be, you know, everything from management uh, to, uh, uh, to workforce planning for them. So 
uh, you know, w it's a combination of access to finance and technical assistance that we provide through our operations. So that, that those reports about the Chang going to consultant it wasn't accurate and it should be dispelled actually. Yes, yes, we would like to dispel that uh, misunderstanding. Let's come to private sector support. Mm -hmm. What is the bank doing for Ghana? Because in times like this where mm -hmm. interest rates are quite high and access to capital is a big challenge. I know for on the, the structural and the policy space, you've played a lot, a lot role there as well, but is there any role that the group is playing to again support private sector in Ghana here? Mm -hmm. Indeed, we have, um, uh, we have support from IDA, mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, the, an, an important um, branch that's providing support, but also through the IFC, mm -hmm. um, and also MEGA in terms of guarantees. Um, we have, um, I think there are uh, uh, several priorities for us in private sector development. Uh, one is um, uh, strengthening the business environment, the environment for doing business in Ghana, right? As you say, that's a critical determinant of, of growth, of investment, of job creation. And there's um, uh, important work to be done there. Um, so um, uh, one of the things we do <coughs> is, is analytical work on investment climate, on uh, the business environment, and identifying what are the, con what are the constraints and where uh, work needs to be done. Um, one example is, is secure access to land. Mm -hmm. you know, um, so that's, that's one. Um, another aspect of our support is directly through finance. We provide access mm -hmm. to finance through various facilities that we have, as well as through the Development Bank of Ghana, mm -hmm. um, where there is um, a credit provided mm -hmm. to firms, based on criteria, of course, uh, but, um, but we provide access to credit to them, which is an important lubricant for the economy. We also uh, support innovation. Mm. Uh, and I think this is an important element, uh, including in the digital arena. You know, Ghana has done well um, uh, and compared to the rest of the continent in many ways on the digital agenda. Mm. And we're supporting some support to them there as well. So it's, uh, it's a complex set of interrelated issues, uh, but we have, I think, a very nice program in this space. Mm. As I'm more worried about cost of credit and it has been, it's quite high in, in Ghana. Is the bank also worried about that and in terms of the, the, the structural reforms as well? Are you playing any role in that space to ensure that a lot is done to reduce the, the cost of credit in the country? Um, uh, so uh, the, the need, uh, the priority is to fight inflation. Mm. So uh, tight monetary policy is indeed appropriate right now to bring inflation under control. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, the tight monetary policy means that um, the cost of credit will be higher and access to credit will be more limited. Mm -hmm. However, as uh, inflation is decreasing, uh, and hopefully it will continue to decrease um, of the rest of this year and into 2025, uh, then we will expect to see um, credit conditions ease in terms of greater access to credit at, uh, at cheaper rates. Mm. And that's something you're quite optimistic about that. Um, again, if the, if, the, if the government continues on uh, with, the, with the targets set in the macro program, then uh, we would expect to see that, yes. May I also put a plug in, George, for our recent Ghana economic update, yeah. uh, which was just published, which contains a wealth of information mm -hmm. on, um, in detail about how we see the prospects mm -hmm. going forward. And it's true that I've never seen, I mean, for me as a general, the, the volumes of data and report the bank has released even in recent times on the Ghanaian economy. Let, let, let me bring this home, and not the, the group in terms of their global operations. Poverty alleviation, poverty reduction in Ghana here. Yeah. What is the bank's stance on it? There are some who think that poverty can never be alleviated. It can be reduced and the conditions improved. Where do you stand on this in terms of the Ghana specific and dealing with the poverty situation? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very important priority for us. It's, it's a core element of our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really what I think motivates many of us as professionals on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, Ghana has had an exemplary track record on poverty reduction. Mm -hmm. So I want to recognize that as well. Um, poverty rates came down from uh, over 50% in the 90s uh, down to uh, the low uh, 20s, 23, 24% before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. uh, with the shock of COVID, um, with the um, uh, deteriorated external environment, with um, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, 
and the macroeconomic uh, crisis in, in Ghana, poverty increased to about 30%. Um, uh, so uh, uh, there's still much more work to be done. Um, I think an important element coming back to the long-term growth agenda, George, is how much poverty are you getting from your growth? Mm -hmm. So there's a nice uh, statistic we like to look at, which is the, um, the elasticity mm -hmm. of poverty reduction mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to growth. Yeah. So one thing that does worry me when we look at the data is that this uh, number used to be higher than it is now. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, in the 90s, uh, that number was about 1.4. So for every 1% in GDP growth, you had a 1.4% in the poverty level. Uh, the most recent data <coughs> indicates that that number is approximately now 0 0.1. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting the impact on poverty reduction that we'd like to see from, from growth. So I think this is an important structural challenge mm -hmm. for Ghana over the medium term. Um, at the same time, the crisis, uh, domestic and external, have affected, as I said, poverty has increased. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's important to ensure that um, we're all doing as much as we can to support uh, the poor in Ghana. So the government's social protection programs are good. Uh, we're supporting improvements in those. We're supporting additional allocations to those programs. But comparatively speaking, Ghana spends less on social protection as a share of GDP than uh, many other countries uh, g at its income level. As you wrap up this discussion, for you, the outlook on the economy optimistic at the bank or you're watching the space to ensure that you play that rightful role to ensure that you remain on track? Can I say both? Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, steady progress has been made mm -hmm. and, and we want to recognize that and applaud that, uh, but much more needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So we'll be, um, we've been partners with Ghana for 60 years and I very much look forward under my tenure to mm -hmm. deepening uh, that partnership mm -hmm and uh, doing even more together for the citizens of Ghana. So, so Brian, I, I, again, I said we're wrapping up, but again, there are some who are worried that post the World Bank and the IMF program, we could slip. And the concern is that in terms of the structural reforms, how concerned is the bank that, you know, whilst I see progress being made, I still want to see much progress on the structural reforms to ensure that we don't get back to our worst situation post the IMF program and the World Bank support as well. That is a fear out there. Structural reforms are absolutely critical. As I said, um, a 3% growth rate uh, is not the best Ghana can do. Um, and, but to get there, we're going to need uh, to support and implement um, structural reforms across a number of areas, domestic resource mobilization, energy, agriculture, private sector development, and s trade. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about trade maybe in another interview, but um, trade policy and uh, uh, trade facilitation to take advantage of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So there's a huge agenda in Ghana, like in uh, just about every other developing country that uh, the World Bank works in, and we're, we're here to support. Indeed, you're here to support Mr. Robert Talisio O'Brien. I hope I got the names yes, right. And I did. appreciate Thank it so much because this will be the first time we're talking. He is the World Bank uh, Country Director for Ghana and Liberia and the other countries in the West African region as well. As we got his thoughts on Ghana's economic recovery and the role that they are playing. Robert Talisio, I want to get that middle name right, and O'Brien. And I will be coming more for to see the progress that has been made on mm -hmm. the economy and what the bank is doing. So my name is George Jaffe. This has been PM Express Business Edition.